Okay, so today we're going to be talking about your post-completion optional practical training and everything that goes into the application and how to proceed with all of the different steps. So what is post-completion OPT? That is optional practical training that you use after you finish your program of study. So OPT is employment that's directly related to your major field of study, and it's only for students in F1 status. So if any of you have had CPT, you know that you must directly relate it to your program and the course of study that you are working on right now. It can't be for something previously that you did. So um, that is something to keep in mind whenever you're looking for jobs. You wanna make sure that the job description and the, uh, the posting of the job is relevant to your program of study. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time getting that approved. It's usually not um, that difficult if you're looking in the correct field. Are you eligible for OBT? So to be eligible for OBT, you need to have a valid F-1 visa. You need to have been enrolled in a full course of study for at least one academic year. If you have only been here for eight months, for example, you would not be eligible for post-completion OBT. If your um, I-20 was terminated for whatever reason and you re-entered on a new I-20, and you were only here for six months or nine months, even though you your whole program was maybe 18 months, the current I-20 that you're on has to be valid for at least a year um, to be eligible for OBT. Um, also, you have not exceeded 12 months of full-time CBT. So if you are taking um, CBT internships and you have 364 days of full-time CBT, you are okay. Um, it does not affect your eligibility for OPT. Um, Part-time CPT does not affect your eligibility for OPT. It's only when you exceed more than 365 days, 365 days or more of full-time CPT that invalidates your eligibility for post-completion OPT. Most people are not in that situation. If you know that you have a lot of full-time CPT, please reach out to our office whenever you're um, starting that OPT process, and we can help you uh, see how much time you've had at full-time CPT and make sure that you are still eligible. Uh, for OPT, you do not have to have a job offer before you apply for OPT. Actually, most people do not have a job offer. They go ahead and apply, and then once you apply, you have some time um, to find a job before, um, you know, while you're waiting for your OPT to be approved. So, um, and again, as a reminder, the employment must be related to your program of study. There are different types of employment that you can work on while on OPT. You can work for more than one employer. This happens sometimes and that's totally fine. All jobs though, they must be related to your field of study. So you can't have like an internship that's unpaid and then work at some place that's not um, legal, like you can't work at a store or a gas station or something like that. You must have um, your employment related to directly to your program of study. Um, work for hire. You can you can be a 1099 or an independent contractor. You can do that. Um, you would just need to um, you know show us the documentation and make sure that you have that all figured out and that you are employed. Um, sometimes if people are starting up a business, you can also be a self-employed business owner. That is fine as well. You would just, again, you would provide the documentation just as you would with um, at, if you were working for somebody else. And you can also be employed through an agency or a consulting firm. So we call these headhunters. Sometimes they would find um, different jobs you know, for students, you can either work, you can actually work for them if it's relevant to your major, or you can work for temporary placements uh, that they can find for you as long as it's related to uh, your program of study. Unpaid employment is also okay, but it must not violate any labor laws. So basically, this is a protection for F1 students. If someone is paying you nothing for something that a U.S. citizen or permanent resident is doing for pay, then that's a violation of labor law. So you just want to make sure if you do, if you are offered an um, unpaid internship 
or an unpaid position, make sure that you talk to the HR person at that place of employment to make sure that that's the same for everybody. Like if, if an American were to um, apply for that, that it's also unpaid. Um, just that's kind of a protection for students. So this is the biggest question that we get asked, I think, before people start applying for OPT is when can I apply? So we call this a 90-60-90 rule. You have 90 days um, before your program end date to start applying for OPT. So this semester, your program end date, if you are graduating in December, is December 22nd, uh, 2023. So you can start 90 days before them, which would be coming up soon, September. Um, September 22nd or later, you can start applying for OPT. Um, 60 days, you can choose your OPT start date the day after your program completion. So that would start on December 22nd. You could say, I want my, my OPT to start December 23rd. That could be possible if you apply early enough and you get your EAD and your approval notice, it might be back in order for you to start the day after. But a lot of times people will choose their start date to be a little bit later. You can go up to 60 days after your completion date. So you can start, you can choose a start date up to February 19th, I think is 60 days after um, December um, 22nd. So yeah, or I don't know, sometime in February, we will send you an email with the exact dates um, so that you know when you can apply, but that gives you a general idea. So what that means, um, if you choose your start date to be February 1st, for example, it, you do not have to have a job secured by February 1st. You can, and that's great. Also, you cannot start working before February 1st. Let's say you apply and you get your approval on like January 15th, but your um, the start date on your EAD and on your I-20 says February 1st. You cannot start working until February 1st. If you haven't found a job by February 1st, you're also okay. You have 90 days of unemployment while on that year of OPT. So you have 90 days from February 1st to find a job. A lot of times people think it's 90 days from graduation, but that's not the case. You actually have 90 days from the date that you choose as your start date for OPT. So you don't have to use all of that. Um, if you wanted to go, you know, um, take a break a little bit before you started working, that's fine. But you just need to keep in mind that the maximum that you have is 90 days. It would be good for you to leave a little bit of room there in case you lost the job for whatever reason and you needed to find a new one. But the total days of unemployment is 90 days or more or less three months. Where do you find this information about OPT? You can go on our website. You will have access to this recording and the slideshow after we are done presenting. So you can look at these slides a little bit more in detail and then go to all of these places yourself. But you would go to our um, International Student Services website and then click on working in the United States as an F1 student and then OPT. Then you would click down here where it says OPT application process and requirements, so number four on the slide. And then there is a, a little blurb about OPT as well as the actual link to the OPT application, which is that red box. Um, well, that's the application guide. And then later on, you, you have the other forms that are available to you that you need to fill out as well. So before we meet with any students, because we have so many students that are applying for OBT, in addition to other things that we need to help students with, we ask students to read through all of that information first. We also ask them to either attend this webinar or watch the recording. And then um, if you still have questions or if you're getting ready to submit and you want someone to go through the application with you one last time, we're happy to do that. But after the other things, because we wanna make sure that you're utilizing the resources that are available to everybody. How do you apply for OPT? Um, this is really, really important that you understand this. We put this in our emails. We tell this to you whenever you come into our office, but whenever people start applying for OPT and they're filling out the USCIS application online um, and it tells you to upload an I-20, sometimes people upload the wrong I-20 um, there and they submit it and then they ruin the whole thing. So what the I-20 that you need is a new I-20 that comes from our office 
after we have gone through all of the documents with you and ensured that they are correct and ready to be uploaded to um, USCIS. So please do not submit any application to USCIS until we have reviewed that with you. Um, when you send us an, um, an email requesting OPT, then someone from our office will be in contact with you. They'll be able to give you all of the different steps. They'll collect that information from you. When it's ready to be processed for that new I-20, they will send it to a DSO, and then that DSO will send you the I-20. So um, it takes a little while for the OPT process, so that's why we always encourage students. It takes a little bit longer than other um, processing for our office because there are so many parts. And if the application is not complete, it does add time to that. So please read through the steps, um, make your application as complete as possible, and that will ensure that you get reviewed a lot more quickly than someone who's only given partial applications. Um, so do not upload and submit until we tell you it's ready to go. So the first step on the OPT application is the OPT Academic Advisor Recommendation Form. So we need this before we even start looking at the rest of your application materials. So the OPT Advisor Form is something that you fill out the very top of it. It says student in that section. And on the bottom section, it says Academic Advisor. That's the form that you would fill out as well. Um, so that is all that you would need to do. The advisor will send it to us and then we will move on from there. The next step is the OPT application process. So these are the files that you must submit. They all go to our email address, isgss at lewisu.edu. Um, you will have your academic advisor recommendation your form I-765, um, there is, Jay will show you a little bit later how to find that. There are a couple different versions, but um, USCIS, we actually just had a meeting yesterday with government officials and they do not want any paper applications anymore. So they only want um, the online application. They've been trying to completely do away with paper applications, but no one really uses them anyway. So there is a way to fill out everything. Actually, their website's really nice and easy to follow. Um, but before you submit it, it gives you the option to print a snapshot. That's the um, I-765 that you'll send to us. It's easy for us to read. It's all typed in there and it's not some handwriting that's illegible. Um, we will read through that. We'll make sure that you've completed all the, the parts that need to be completed. Then you also need copies of your previous I-20s if you have CPT or OPT before. If you've never had CPT or OPT, you don't need to include any other I-20s. You can just, um, if you want to send something, you can send us your current I-20, but you really, we only need the ones that have work authorization on them before. You will also send a copy of your passport and visa, your most recent I-94. We'll show you how to find that and two passport style photos. Actually, um, you upload this so you can get it from a place like CVS or Walmart or an, an, another drugstore that would have that. I think um, some of the shipping companies have them as well, like maybe FedEx might have it um, depending on the location, but you'll upload a digital image and then the system will tell you if it approves it or not. So there are certain qualifications just like a regular passport photo, but you don't necessarily need to have that print out because we're not submitting them in person anymore. So you'll upload the photo there. Um, also an EAD card. So if you've ever had employment authorization before, uh, most likely through another OPT or some other work authorization, you would include a copy of that. And then um, you will not actually have a physical check. There is a way to pay online through the system. So after you submit your OPT application, uh, the system will automatically take you to the portal where you're able to pay that fee. Just one note along with the fee, OPT processing usually does not take a super long time. It's usually, we say more or less four to six weeks. It can take a little bit longer during certain times of the year. Um, you do not need to pay for premium processing. That is a expensive fee. If you really want to out of security for your own self, if you if that makes you feel more secure, you're welcome to do that. But we don't recommend it just because it's expensive and these applications really don't take that long to get processed. 
So while you're in the process of applying for OPT, if you have any questions about that, please ask us because we hate for you to spend extra money if you really don't have to. Again, personal preference, you can choose to do it if you want to, but it's really not necessary in most cases. Um, so after you receive that I-20 with us, um, the new I-20, after we reviewed everything, after we received the advisor form, uh, you will review it. You'll make sure everything on there looks correct. Then you're going to print it, sign your name on the, bot on the bottom of it, scan it, and then you're gonna upload that one to your USCIS application. The important thing to remember here is once you have that new I-20 from us, there's a date. That's the date that we send it to you by email. It's also the date on the I-20 that is next to the signature of the DSO. That is the date where you must submit within 30 days to USCIS. Otherwise, they will deny it and they will deny it. So if, I, so if someone submits an OPT application on October 1st, um, and it's approved on October 1st, and we send you the I-20 on October 1st, you have until October 30th, basically, to submit that app, that whole application to USCIS, click send, pay the fee, and then get that receipt notice. If you submit it on like November 3rd, you're too late, and they will deny it. And it's really hard to get out of that. Um, so please just don't do that in the first place. Just be very mindful of once you get that OPT I-20, you need to be ready to submit the application. And there's really no reason why you should wait because you've already had everything approved. Everything has been uploaded. We've reviewed everything. It's ready to submit. So just please, when you get that I-20, upload it right away, submit it, pay the fee, and then you can wait for your I-20 to be, or for your um, OPT application to be processed by USCIS. So, after um, submitting the OPT application online, you will get an you'll get um, a receipt notice, kind of like um, a confirmation that you submitted it. So it will give you a number, and then at some point within usually thirty to forty five days, you will get a mail document with your OPT approval notice and the EAD card. You want to make sure when you're filling out your application that your address is complete and correct because sometimes students do receive that they have been approved, but that EAD goes missing. Um, that's usually because something in the address is wrong. So be very careful about the address that you choose for your OPT application because you wanna make sure that you actually receive that card that you need um, as soon as you get it. Otherwise, it, it prolongs the whole process and it makes it complicated for students and something that doesn't need to be complicated. Um, after you receive your EAD card, you would email us. You do not have to do it. I mean, you should do it right away and let us know that you've gotten the approval, but we can't do anything with it until you actually have an offer letter from an employer. So the next step, so hopefully while you're waiting for your OPT application to be approved, you're looking for employers, you're looking for um, jobs, and you're trying to get that job offer that would start on the day that you requested or shortly after or something like that. Um, so here's a scenario. Let's say you want to apply. Um, you, you have selected February 1st as your OPT start date. You've been looking for employers and you find one, um, they give you an offer letter and it says January 15th. So I kind of mentioned this before, but you, you would have to tell the employer that thank you for this offer letter, but I cannot start working until February 1st and when I receive my EAD card and my approval notice. So let's say that you receive your approval notice and um, you give it to your employer and now you're okay to start on February 1st. So once you have the um, approval notice, the EAD, the offer letter, and then there's another form on our website that we'll show you later that is for the employer that has additional information about your supervisor and things like that. Um, it's a very short form. Once we have all of that information, you would send it to our ISGSS email and we will create an, an updated I-20 with your employment authorization information on it. We can't create that without your offer letter and that employer form. So um, once you get that EAD card, just know that there's not much we can do with it until you have your offer letter. So once you have it, if you don't have the offer letter yet, please work on getting that. 
and then submitting it to us when you have all of that stuff. Um, once we have all of that, right now we have a lot of processing that we're doing. So it's taking more like three to five days for processing on most things. If it is urgent and you need it right away, let us know and we can try to get it at the top of our list. But typically um, for most tasks right now for updating any I-20s, it's about three to five business days. Uh, if our workload is lower at a particular time, we usually get it back to you in one to two days. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're um, you know, waiting for your information. So if you, um, these are things that you need to remember even if you are working on OPT, you are still classified as an F1 student. Uh, you do not, if you do not report to our office within 90 days of that OPT employment, then your OPT is invalidated and your status will be terminated. This is something that happens automatically in the system. We can also do it um, personally, but usually it's an automatic termination if you have not reported. So let's say, again, you have that February 1st workday and let's see, March, April, May, May 2nd comes along. You started working, but you never reported it to us. Unfortunately, that status is gonna be auto-terminated. We have to try to go back and fix it if it lets us, and it creates a hassle for you and it makes it difficult for everybody. But um, if you do report, so just remember, report, report, report. You still have to report to the DSO at Lewis. Um, just to make sure, or the ISGSS office, just to make sure that your status is always valid and you're not gonna have any issues with that. Um, if you can't find a job within that 90 days, it's not like you have to leave immediately, you still have your 60 days. So, you know, whenever you complete your program and you graduate, if, you, if you're if you not going to do OPT, you have 60 days to wrap up everything and leave the country. It's the same for OPT, if you can't find employment, within that 90 days of unemployment time, then you have 60 days to leave. So you have a little bit of time um, to figure everything out. And this is an important note as well. There is SEVP and there's CVIS. So SEVP is the agency and CVIS is the database. So students cannot access CVIS. SEVP gives you access to a portal um, they have a tool that lets students on OPT and STEM OPT meet their legal reporting requirements by using the portal to report the changes or asking the DSO to report it to them. Our policy is for you to send the employment updates to us so that we can update it for you, ensure that it's input correctly, and provide you with the updated I-20 with the employment information on it. Um, only students with approved OPT or STEM OPT can access the portal. So if you're looking for the portal and you've just applied for OPT, you're not going to have access. Um, it doesn't, even though you have access, it doesn't mean you have to like go in there constantly and worry about that. As long as you're reporting to us about any address changes and any employment changes, you've done all of your reporting requirements. That's just kind of a tool um, to help you see what you know what's in your system so that everything on your end is fine. If you notice something, if you log into that portal and you see something that's not up to date, you can update that yourself or you can let us know and we can make sure that that's updated for you. Once your OPT is approved, you will get an email notice that includes a link to the portal. If you um, don't access it within one to two months after your OPT is approved, it will um, lock you out of it and you will have to request a portal reset. We can do that in our office in most cases. So you would just send an email to our ISS, ISGSS at lewisu.edu email and then ask for a CVIS or SEVP portal reset link and we can get that to you. Um, again, as I mentioned before, you will have access to the portal, but every day we get questions about students um, worried that they're not able to access it. Even if you don't have access to it, we'll make sure that you get access. But in the meantime, as long as you're reporting your employment, that's all that's required of you. You do not have to do it through the portal. Just report it to your DSO and then you don't have to worry about anything. You may change employers while you're on OPT, that's totally fine. If you do change employers, you must report that to our office within 10 days um, to submit a change of employment. There is an employer form that you would fill out. There is a letter 
you would need to have from your previous employer that says your end date. Um, a new offer letter from the new employer. And then once we have all of that information, we'll end the previous employment, put the new employer on there, update that employment, and then send you the updated I-20. While you are waiting for your OPT to be approved, it is not recommended to travel outside of the US. Why? Um, a couple of reasons. Number one, if you leave the U.S. and you're trying to re-enter and your OPT is not approved, you do not have the appropriate documentation for re-entry. You might be allowed entry, but you might have a problem and they could say, hey, you don't have your approved OPT. We don't know for sure if it's going to be approved, so we're not going to let you in. Um, I don't know if that would actually happen. I, I know that it has happened before, but um, our rule of thumb is just not to travel outside of the country while it's pending. Now, once it's approved, you can travel at your will. Just make sure that you get that travel signature on your I-20 before you leave, just as if you were a student. And the travel signature is good for one year once it's on the I-20. So it's on the second page of the I-20, same as any other time, just make sure that you do that. Um, if you, again, if you want to have Another thing that you should have uh, if you want to leave the country and your OPT is approved, we would recommend to a student before leaving to please try to secure a job offer. That's going to minimize your chances of, of any problem at the border because not only do you have the approval, but you also have the job offer letter from the employer on their letterhead with the start date. Um, and it usually has like the salary and all of that on there. So that is very good proof to the border patrol that you have a valid reason for re-entry. So we always recommend that students get that before. And then to travel also with your EAD. So again, if you're re-entering the border, you don't have an EAD yet, they might have a problem with that. So offer letter, EAD, and new I-20 are really important to have. What can you do after your 12-month OPT period? If you are eligible for a STEM extension, you can email us, but make sure that you do that before your current OPT expires. Um, if you're not sure if your program is STEM, you can always ask us, but most uh, graduate programs at Lewis, many of them are STEM, so a lot of you would be eligible for this. Uh, your STEM extension application window, just like with regular OPT, that opens 90 days before the OPT end date. So if you started February 1st, 2024 and you end, um, let's say January 30th, 31st, 2025, um, you can start your STEM OPT application or employment. You would start your application before that, but you would start your employment immediately following that. Um, to check if you're eligible for that STEM extension, you can look at the SIP code on your I-20. It's the code um, of the program. And then you can go to the USICE, um, website and you can Google it and it'll show if it's on the STEM list. Again, if you can't find it, just ask us and we will confirm. So that wraps up my portion of the presentation. So thank you so much for listening. Good luck with your OPT applications. If you have any other questions, you can please contact us by send, sending an email with your specific question to isgss at lewisu.edu. And I'm going to...